Hello everyone, welcome back to Matt Specs. My name is Stephanie and today we're going to talk about area and the distributive property. So let's get started. So first we're going to have a quick recap of what is area. And our general definition of area is defined as the amount of space a geometrical figure takes up in two dimensions. So what does that mean for the area of a rectangle? So the area of a rectangle is going to be the amount of space, you guessed it, that a rectangle takes up in two dimensions. So we just want to know how much space is this rectangle taking up. And in two dimensions, that would be like um, our coordinate plane, so x and y. Okay. Um, so how do we find the area of the rectangle? Well, remember we talked about a formula, right? If you can go back a few videos back, we talked that the area of a rectangle is the product of length times the width. And what are length and width? What is that? Those are going to be numbers, right? So when we have um, rectangles, like say, for example, this, we're going to have numbers associated to this side. So this could be the width. We could say that this width is three. And this um, length, this side right here could be eight. And our units could be feet, right? Eight, three feet times. So when we find um, the area of, say, this rectangle, we would multiply three times eight and our feet times our feet. So area would be 24 feet squared, right? So we've done a lot of these problems um, before. And today we're going to introduce to you how we can apply the, the distributive property when we don't know a side or um for example, we don't know what this measurement is, but from here to here we do, um, for example. So we're going to learn all of that today, but that was a quick recap of how we find the area of a rectangle, and that would be the area is equal to the length times the width, okay? So let's do a quick recap example um, where we're asked to find the area of the rectangle to the right. So here you see our approach. We're going to write the formula for area of the rectangle. Then we're going to substitute our numbers in to the equation and then we're going to simplify. Okay, we've done this before, um, but nonetheless it's a good exercise for you to um, get those uh, kind of thinking process going. So we have area is equal to length times width. So now we're going to substitute. I'm going to look at my rectangle here and I'm going to choose my length to be 10, 10 feet. Remember we need to bring our units and my width is going to be 5 feet. It doesn't matter which order I multiply in because if you remember the commutative property tells us that we can multiply 5 times 10 or 10 times 5 and we would still get the same answer. So I'm going to uh, substitute, so I'm going to write 10 feet times 5 feet, okay? Now I'm going to simplify, so I have 10 times 5, they're both positive, so it would be positive 50, and feet times feet will give me feet squared. So that is how we have found area of a rectangle before. And today we are going to work on some more examples. So here we're asked to find the area of the rectangle to the right. And as you can see, we have on this side this x. We don't know what this 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 what, the, what this number is. So we put a variable, because remember variables represent values of unknown numbers. So we don't know what this measurement is. We do, however, know that from the top of the rectangle to this red line, it's three units. And from here, this entire side of the rectangle, this is seven units. But we don't know what this measurement is. And this is where the distributive property um, helps us. Um, so we can find the area of this rectangle um, by one of two methods. We can treat this as one big rectangle. Um, for example, all of this and this entire side, all of this and this side. Okay, my lines are not perfectly straight, but you get the idea. The entire rectangle. Okay, or 
we can treat it as two smaller rectangles. So it would be this rectangle here plus this rectangle here at the bottom. And we would still get the same area. Now, at the end, we are going to have an x in our area uh, formula or equation because we don't know this side. Now, th this would prepare you for when you work on problems where you do get a value for x and you can just plug it in. But we're just going to um, work with what we have and then later on add to this, okay? So uh, for, for the first part, I'm going to treat it as one big rectangle. Remember, I'm finding the area. So area is going to equal the length times the width, okay, for both of these. But for right now, one big rectangle. So I am going to say that my width, I'm going to start there first, is going to be 7. So my width is going to be 7. I'm just going to write units. For my length, though, I know that from the top of the triangle to from the top of the rectangle to this red line is three units, and from this red line all the way down is x. So this entire side, in order to find the length of this, I'm going to add three plus x, right? So my length is going to be three plus x and I'm gonna write units on the outside. Now, to find the area, I multiply my width times my length. So I'm gonna have area is equal to three plus x, and then I'm gonna multiply seven. And that is my area. Now, if we were given a value for x, say we were to, um, we were to work with the problem and they said, well, find the area when x is equal to 10. Then what we what would we do afterwards? Well, we would substitute, right? So if we were given x is equal to 10, we would substitute 10 here and add and then multiply. Okay. Um, but because we're not given that, um, this was this would be our answer. Okay. And you can also write it as area is equal to 7 times 3 plus x, okay? Now, let's do it uh, with b. What if we treated it as two smaller rectangles? So this top one would be my rectangle, my small one, first one. And so let's, let's work with that one first because we know this side is 7 and this side is 3. So again, area is going to be your length times your width, but we're going to be adding another um, rectangle, right? So we're going to add another length times the width. So area for the small for the small rectangle is going to be seven times three. Why? Because my width is three, my length is seven for this rectangle. Now for my other rectangle, I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use red. Okay, so now I'm going to add. This would be my other rectangle, right? Because I would have two, but I'm trying to find the area of the entire thing, so I have to add. So this side length is seven. And since this is seven up here, then down here, this would also be seven, right? So for this rectangle, I would say that my width is seven and my length is x. So I would just multiply seven times x. x would be my length, seven would be my width, and that's how I find area. This is one rectangle, this is another rectangle, but because I'm going to find the area of the entire rectangle, I add. Okay, and now here, what you can do is um, multiply seven times three, that's 21, and then just bring down your seven X. And these two answers are the same. How are they the same? If I were to take this answer, area is equal to seven times three plus X. And if I were to use the distributive property that we've been discussing, and I were to distribute seven into this, Seven times three would give me 21. And seven times X 
well, I'd have to add, that'd be 7x. And you see that this and this are the same. The only thing is that we have distributed the 7 into here, and we can get the exact same thing, right? Um, so it really just, it's just a matter of approach, how you see this, and you'll get the same answer. And um, we can make this one look like this by using the distributive property. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. So here again, we're asked to find the area of this rectangle. And we can do one of two approaches. We can treat it as one big rectangle to find the area or two small rectangles, adding them together in order to find the area. So remember, area is equal to the length times the width. So let's do A first. If I were to treat this as one big rectangle, my length, I would say, I'm just gonna write L. My length, I am gonna say, actually, I'm gonna start with my width. I'm gonna say my width is six, because that's the shorter side. And my length, well, I have from the top of this rectangle to the red line, I we don't know what that is, so that's X. But from the bottom down, that is measured as eight. So this entire side is gonna be X plus eight. So that is my length, x plus eight. Now, if I wanna find the area, I just multiply with times length. So x plus eight times six, and that is my area. If I wanted to uh, treat this as two smaller rectangles, and I wanted to find the area of the entire rectangle, well, then I would write, area is equal to length times width plus length times width, okay? Because we're gonna have two rectangles. So for the first one, I am actually gonna start with this one right here. So I know that here, my length is going to be six and my width is gonna be X. So for the first one, I multiply six times X. And now I add, I add the area of the other rectangle. And where is the other rectangle? I'm gonna go ahead and use a different So this would be the other rectangle right here. And we're going to add, we're going to add it to this. So this side. This length is eight and this side is going to be six because this side and this side are on the same rectangle. So this would be six. So my, I would say my length is gonna equal to eight and my width it will be equal to six. So I multiply eight times six. And now I can multiply this out. Area is equal to six X plus 48. And now we have this answer here and this answer here, and they are the same. We have found the area of the rectangle. One approach we treated it as one big, was one big rectangle. And in the other approach, we treated it as two smaller rectangles. But I can get from this answer, from the one big rectangle, this area, to this one by simply distributing the six and it's exactly the same, okay? So let's go ahead and continue. Here we're asked to find the area of the rectangle. So I am going to begin again by treating it as one big rectangle. So area is equal to length times width. So my length for this is gonna be seven. So I notice this whole side is seven. So I'm gonna say my length is seven. And for my width, well, I have two and X. 
So for this whole side, I'm going to add 2 plus x, and that's going to be my width. Now to find area, I multiply the length times the width, so it'll be 7 times 2 plus x, and that's my area for this rectangle. And again, um, we don't know what x is. That would be something we would uh, work on later on in a problem. If we were given area or if we were given the value of x, then we would be able to um, say the area of this rectangle is a number. And we would know what that number is, OK? So for b, we would um, to find the area of this rectangle, we would treat it as two small rectangles. So where would those be? So area is going to equal to length times width plus length times width. So my first rectangle, I'm going to actually um, use this one as my first rectangle. So I have 7 times 2. So my length is going to be 7, and my width is going to be 2 for this first rectangle. So it'll be 7 times 2. That is my first rectangle here. For the second rectangle, it's going to be here. This is my other rectangle. So I'm going to multiply x times 7. So my length is going to be 7, and my width is going to be x for the second rectangle. So it'll be 7 times x. And now you can multiply that 7 times 2, 14 plus 7x. And that is the area of our rectangle. When we break it down into two smaller rectangles and add their areas, over here to the left is the area of the rectangle if we treat it as one big rectangle. And again, these two answers are equivalent. So let's go ahead and continue to the next example. Here we're asked to find the area of the rectangle. So as one big rectangle, I'm going to say that my length is going to be 9. And you could also write it as width. It doesn't matter. And my width is going to be, for this entire side, it's going to be 2x plus 4. So my width is going to be 2x plus 4. And we know that area is length times width. So I'm going to multiply L and W up here. So 9 times 2x plus 4. And that's my area for this rectangle. And now if we were to treat it as two smaller rectangles, it would be area is equal to length times width plus length times width. So for the first rectangle, I would say this one up here. So my length would be 9, and my width would be 2x. So I would multiply 9 times 2x. And now for my second rectangle, it would be this one on the bottom. And then this side would be 9. So my length would be 9, and my width would be 4. So it would be 9 times 4. You can go ahead and multiply. 9 times 2, that, that actually can actually multiply that together. So 9 times 2 would give me 18. I bring my x plus 9 times 4 will give me 36. And this is the area of two small rectangles added together to find the area of the entire thing. And here is the area of the entire rectangle. And as you can see, these are equivalent. If I were to distribute the 9 into here, 9 times 2 will give me 18, bring my x. 9 times 4 will give me 36. So they are equivalent. So let's continue. Here again, we're going to find the area of this rectangle. And as one big rectangle, we need to find the length and the width. So for my width, I'm going to say my width is 11 here. And my length is going to be this entire side. So it'll be x plus 5. And now, because area is the product of length times width, I multiply. So x plus 5 times 11. 
or you can say 11 times x plus 5, whichever way you like it. Now, if I were to find the area as two smaller rectangles, it would be the area length times width plus length times width. So for my first rectangle, I'm going to choose this one. So my length would be 11 and my width would be 5. So 11 times 5 plus the area of the other rectangle. It would be this one. Now this side is x, and then this side would be 11. So my length could be 11, and my width could be x. And so I'd be 11 times x. If I were to multiply 11 times 5, that would be 55 plus 11x. And that is the area of the entire rectangle when we break it down into two small rectangles. And of course, this answer at the top is the same as this answer at the bottom. Remember, all I have to do here is just distribute that 11, and I would get this right here. So it would be 11 times x plus 55, if I were to multiply this into this, okay? So let's go ahead. Hopefully that is making sense. Um, this is just a matter of approach. If you like seeing it as one big rectangle, that's fine. Or if you see two small rectangles, that's also fine. Um, either way is good, um, as long as you understand what we're doing and how we're finding it and how the distributive property relates these two answers, okay? And that is the conclusion of our discussion on area and the distributive property. Today we worked on many examples and we saw how we can use the distributive property to express area. Next time we will learn how to combine like terms. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I really do appreciate it and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.